welcome back. To throw light on the topic, role of alternative investment strategies for better risk-adjusted returns in 2021 and the decade ahead, we have with us Mr. Vaibhav Sangvi, co-CEO and portfolio manager of Vendors Capital Alternate Strategies. Mr. Vaibhav Sangvi comes armed with over 17 years of experience in managing funds across leading financial institutions. And prior to Avendus, he was part of Ambit Investment Advisors Limited from October 2008 to September 2016. Now, his fund management experience prior to Ambit was with DSP Merrill Lynch from October 2005 to September 2008, where he was instrumental in building the property trading team, managing and advising over 1 billion US dollars. He has also worked with HDFC Bank as part of Treasury. Sir, your session is 25 minutes long and I request you to please take it over. Let's welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Vaibhav Sangvi. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Aishwarya, and thank you, PMS AI World Conference, for having me uh, to, to present on a topic which is pretty much close to my heart. So what I'll do is basically over through this presentation, uh, you know, I'll kind of try and highlight you uh, the important risk-adjusted return parameters. And in that risk-adjusted return parameter, we would also want to kind of, uh, you know, give you a world view of investments in stocks, uh, what kind of it lacks, uh, and how risk and, behave, uh, you know, risk and behavior are kind of intertwined. At the same time, uh, what's the solution actually to kind of uh, you know, tell you that, you know, how you can mitigate risks and how you can kind of elongate or not elongate, but you can hold on to your investment for a pretty long period of time as well. Uh, because long-term investments are the need of the hour in any case for a better consistent returns. So let me kind of jump on to the next slide uh, and give you an overall uh, you know, world view of what the investment gurus have been telling uh, you know, uh, in, in, in their kind of wisdom. Now, if you see here, you know, and I'll, I'll be actually also highlighting few statements, uh, prominent statements by uh, the investment gurus, what does Charlie Munger uh, kind of try and summarize is basically from this statement is that uh, you want to probably think long term. You know, instant gratification is not something uh, you know which, uh, which which can yield you consistent returns. But think long term, and you'll make kind of good consistent money. And that's what Charlie Munger has said in thinking long term. Next comes Shiv Davis, who who again says that. While you invest in for a longer period of time, uh, what is also important is for you to enable to be invested in the longer period of time is to overcome the kind of emotions which come along with your investments. Uh, the next one is basically uh, Benjamin Graham who tries and highlights what, what it's written in here is that con in continuation with Shelby is that, you, that the investor psychology is extremely important uh, to, to overcoming uh, you know, your, your investments, uh, uh, investments, I would say, uh, pain points. Uh, and where he says that uh, the greed and fear are those kind of components or other, uh, you know, uh, uh, psychological aspects are kind of uh, you know, an impediment uh, for, for, for somebody to hold on to a long term. And last but not the least is Warren Buffett, who again says that over a period of time, if you invest into great companies, uh, and keep holding for you know long term, then then the returns are you know the, the the kind of returns you make is just phenomenal. Now, while all of these guys have given you uh, you know great insights in terms of holding for long term uh, and uh, you know making huge amount of money uh, in, into the equity markets, uh, let's summarize what they are saying. Is basically one. That super long-term returns. Two, uh, it's early investments. If you do in multi-baggers, uh, you can make tons of money. Three, uh, that equity is one of the best asset classes uh, to be invested in over a longer period of time. However, uh, if when we talk about super long-term returns, why is it that the investors can't invest in for a long term? Now, everybody speaks about long term. Uh, let me kind of ask a simple question is basically how many, how many investors would have invested for 18 years, 20 years, 25 years 
uh, you know, into, into a particular asset classes. I mean, if you can, uh, you know, uh, think about people across around you, you will definitely notice that, the, that those kind of investments are in phases. And I'll come into you know, that kind of phases and what happens to investor psychology a little later on. But uh, the next question is basically is that only, multi early investments in multi-bagger. I mean, of course, I mean, if you have seen that many of your stocks have given tremendous returns, talk about uh, Infosys, talk about Hindustan Lever, talk about iShare Motors, a great compounding stories, 15 years, 20 years. But let me ask a simple again a question. How many people you know have these kind of multi-baggers in your portfolio today? You know, except for those promoters who have been holding right from day one till now, how many people have been able to kind of hold to that position where you can count on fingers, you have very, very less amount of people. Lastly, when you talk about best asset class in terms of returns, why has been the investor experience not been good, right? So we have all the data, we have everything in terms of telling you that please be invested into equities, be invested, you know, kind of uh, for a long term. Why is it that if we've not been able to do? Let's kind of analyze that. Uh, when we talk about investment essentials, right, while returns are the center stage of any investments, what we always forget mostly, in fact, always, that is considering the important aspect of risk behind the investment. Now, risk is something which is quite, to be very honest, a very, very boring subject, which, uh, you know, uh, which is one of the most important variables, but, uh, you know, it's never been debated, never been discussed. Uh, and, and, and as I said, it's one of the most extremely variable, uh, important variables for somebody to kind of uh, uh, take the best kind of returns out of the particular asset classes. We always have believed that higher risk is higher returns. However, in the common parlance, if you talk about any investor, uh, people would think about, you know, I want the highest return with the lowest amount of risk, which generally can, you know, to be very uh, honest, doesn't happen, right? So uh, it is extremely important, one, to talk about risk, two, you should be in an ability to assess the risk because you should have that mind frame to kind of assess the risk, right? Three is basically uh, you need to understand the behavioral aspect of risk in terms of your greed and fear. You know, when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, risk and uh, ability to assess risk, when we said is that we should not have blinkers. Now, in a bull market or a bear market, and I'm giving you an example, uh, in a bear market, when index is, you know, in the doldrums, uh, when we are looking at uh, negative stories, negative uh, narratives everywhere, uh, you know, independently, objectively kind of analyzing stuff, uh, uh, true to data, you know, it's very difficult because we have those kind of blinkers, both in a bull market and a bear market, where we try, you know, we, we have a tendency to kind of ignore, uh, you know, what's likely to happen, which can change the current market direction as well. So all in all, we have to look up for risk. We should have the ability to assess risk and we should counter our behavioral aspects to independently, uh, objectively evaluate uh, the risk. So that's why the last one, which is extremely important, is you have to be very, very objective, uh, be honest, be brutal while assessing the kind of uh, assessing the risk parameters. Uh, going by the history, I mean, you know, uh, whenever that big drawdown uh, uh, happens in. Uh, you know, in the market. And when I said being brutal and being honest in terms of the assessment of risk, what we also need to understand is you need to ask a question to your own self. That if I am investing into a particular asset class, uh, would I be able to bear the consequences of a negative outcome? And so for example, if the uh, equity markets in history have gone down by say 40% or 50% or 60%, would I be in a situation to handle that kind of risk? Is a question which everybody has to ask. If it's an equity instrument, if it's a debt instrument, uh, going by your previous averages, uh, if I am been able to 
you know, able to assess or able to, uh, you know, bear the kind of losses which have already happened. Those are the kind of questions one has to, you know, ask and ask in a very, very objective manner. Let me kind of uh, give you a very short story. And I, I really love this story in terms of the, uh, uh, you know, in terms of to explain, uh, you know, there's different nuances of risks. Uh, and I'll, I'll uh, take this a short story from Mahabharata, which is the game of dice. Uh, and, uh, you know, in that game of dice, uh, if you remember, and I'm sure uh, it, is, it is quite common and everybody knows that story, but let me kind of give you different instances in that story, what were the risk factors and caveat is just that, that I'm not comparing uh, the gambling uh, with equity markets at all. But it's just that the nuances of risk is what I want to kind of point out uh, from the story. So in this story, what happens is basically the uh, Kauravs, uh, Kauravas actually invite Pandavas uh, to play the game of dice. Uh, and in that, uh, you know, they had a huge advantage uh, by having a gentleman call, uh, whether it's a gentleman, I don't know, but a, a, a person call uh, Shakuni. Now Shakuni had, uh, you know, huge advantage in terms of rolling the dice purely because he had a mastery and the control over the dice, uh, which he used to use for that kind of play. Having known that, uh, you just did game uh, and sat down for a game, right? So the first aspect here to notice here is basically that you just did, in spite of knowing the risks, did come to the table. He knew that he was betting against odds, right? But he started playing. So that's one important thing. Two, as they went on playing, uh, you know, uh, you just kept on losing, losing money, losing jewelry, losing kingdom, uh, losing his brothers, uh, you know, and, and, and Draupadi as well. At any given point in time, there was no discipline of stop loss, right? Uh, so again, the psychology kind of comes into in, in, uh, in play that, uh, you know, even if you are losing, uh, you know, just that in the hope that I'm going to make money, uh, should the next uh, uh, roll of my dice my kind of be in my favor. So that's something uh, which again is an important, uh, you know, learning there. And lastly, in terms of the behavioral aspects, when you are kind of there, it is very, very difficult to kind of uh, independently assess uh, the nuances uh, or, or, or of risks when you are actually in between uh, that kind of game. So Shakuni kind of uh, played his mastery, won everything, and for 14 years, uh, we saw that they, they had to go for Vanvas or probably to the forests, right? So again, a very short story, but actually it reflects uh, the different aspects and nuances of risks, uh, which, uh, which, which, if I can uh, relate to some extent to the markets, I will probably go into the next slides and uh, tell you. Again, to summarize, a you know, very quick lesson, uh, uh, you know, from the story. One is basically betting against odds, right? Uh, and when we talked about betting against odds, when Yudhishthira actually uh, betted against Shakuni. Uh, was against his odds. So investing in peaks at valuations, which are unreasonable, is equivalent to batting, betting against odds, right? So next is basically when you are betting against odds and you, know, and you don't have any control on your psychology without any discipline in uh, kind of uh, stop losses, uh, you know, you tend to kind of lose good amount of money. And it works both in bull, bull markets and bear markets as well. Uh, Last but not the least, it basically there are no risk mitigation. There was no risk mitigation in this case. Uh, you kept on losing money. Uh, the game of uh, dice doesn't have any derivatives or put or call option, unfortunately. So uh, you a, a lethal combination, uh, you know, can just destroy uh, wealth uh, in, in in hope of returns. Again, last but not the least is just, uh, I'm only saying that I'm not comparing here again, the gambling with uh, equity markets. It's just that I am trying to bring out the nuances in that kind of uh, risk. Now, let me depict all these three factors into a, in, into a chart, which I would probably want to spend a couple of minutes here. 
uh, in this case uh, you know the top chart is basically the normal uh, stock market nifty index from 2006 uh, till date and the bottom chart is basically the net subscriptions uh, you know by investors into mutual funds now if you see at the top chart uh, while the chart is doing fantastic in terms of the returns or the ability uh, returns which has generated over a period of time uh, and if i am not wrong from 2000 to 2020 it has delivered about 12% 11 12% 12 gigger it's a pretty decent return right however let me kind of point out a few things here now if you see the period of uh, september 2007 to january 2008 that was a time when you saw maximum subscription, right? Which was betting against odds and wherein the valuations was pretty expensive. Subsequent to that, you saw a big crash, which is if everybody remembers, it, is, it was global financial crisis and see the effect of that crash. You saw that kind of redemption continuously over the next three to four years while the market went on going up, correct? So the scar of that one uh, big crash remained for a pretty long period of time, wherein actually uh, after the crash, if somebody would have thought very, very objectively, uh, you know, one needs to add on to the investments rather than redeeming their investments, right? So this is again investor psychology at play. And in 2009 and 2010, people would have imagined that, uh, you know, that's the end of the world, right? I mean, the monetary system itself is into kind of deep trouble and the kind of noise, the kind of information overload, uh, uh, you know, comes about is, is too scary uh, and people, hearing those kind of things, not looking at the data, kind of, dump, you know, dump their investments at the wrong time. As I said, people should have invested more rather than taken out, right? Now let's cut that and come back to 2020, which is one of the most recent ones. And I'm sure everybody would have seen that is March of 2020, when COVID happened, you know, you saw that huge deterioration and the huge depreciation on the markets what you see perfectly after that, subsequent redemptions. It is the same thing happening again and again and again and again. At the peaks, people would come into the markets. At the bottoms is when the redemption cycle will start to see to that the market subsequently go up. And if the market goes up for a very long period of time is when they will start and come again. Now, why I'm trying to show this all here is basically we have to understand that at the end of it, humans are with emotions uh, and to mitigate those kind of emotions, uh, risk adjusted return strategies is, are extremely important, right? If you don't see those kind of volatility, you will have confidence in investing into, in, into any asset class. But how do you mitigate that volatility is something which we'll have to probably go and analyze. Next slide. So what are the learnings again from that chart uh, uh, you know, taking lessons from what has already happened in the past. Uh, it is extremely important to understand that over the next decade, if you're looking for good returns, sustenance is the key, right? If you are, uh, if you have the ability or if you are able to invest into a particular asset class for a very long period of time, then you will make money, right? But as I said, the key word is your sustenance. And by sustenance is basically you have to have your control over your emotions. You have to remain invested into strategies which do not give you heartaches, which do not give you, uh, you know, those kind of volatility which you get uncomfortable with, right? People may say, of course, that, you know, we do not get uncomfortable. But once the drawdown do happen, uh, then, then, as you saw, redemptions do happen and you, 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 you know, the investors kind of get out at a, at a pretty wrong time, right? So this is extremely important again, the, uh, uh, which is sustained. Now, how do we sustain for a pretty long period of time? Now, uh, there would be, you know, various tools and methods, but one of the most important thing is basically risk mitigation. Now, uh, risk mitigation uh, can happen 
uh, you know, uh, in various methods. But what is extremely important is the that risk mitigation has to be cornerstone of your all investments. If you are not able to do it, then please uh, go to a professional who or uh, invest into strategies which can do risk mitigation for you. Which comes to the point that uh, risk adjusted return strategies are one of those important tools uh, for you to go and invest, right? Uh, and what do I mean by risk adjusted return strategies? For every unit of risk you take, right, your returns are optimized. You know, you're not trying to maximize your returns, you're trying to optimize your returns. And there is a huge difference between maximization and optimization. And lastly, but not least, is basically to understand those kind of various risk nuances uh, while, while you kind of invest. So once you understand the risk nuances is where you will be able to do your all your risk kind of mitigation. So uh, in terms of the understanding uh, risk nuances for generating uh, risk adjusted returns, uh, and I'll give you one example uh, about our equity markets. Now this different risk nuances can be uh, different in each of those asset classes, but let me start with giving you risk nuances of uh, our equity markets. One is basically that our equity markets comes basically with two types of risk. One is your market risk and the other one is your stock risk. How many times have we kind of tried and independently assess that what is the amount of market risk I'm taking into my portfolio or what is the amount of risk I'm taking, uh, stock risk I'm taking into the portfolio. And if I know both of these elements, what is it that I'm trying to mitigate or what I'm doing to try and mitigate that kind of uh, risk. So what is important is to understand one, the market risk, two, the stock risk, if you are kind of in, invested in equities. Now these risk factors can completely change depending upon your asset classes. Now, if you're investing into debt, then those risk factors would be credit risk or interest risk, right? It's just that what I'm saying is basically you have to understand those nuances of those risks and try to mitigate each and every aspect of those risks. At Avendas, uh, you know, everybody knows and we are known for risk adjusted returns strategies and that is which is what is central to all our offerings. In our flagship product, uh, which is Avendas Absolute Return Fund in the last four years, we've not had a single month which was more than 1% drawdown. And 1% drawdown meaning I've not lost or the fund has not lost a, uh, more than 1% in any single month till date in the last four months, right? Uh, which is just phenomenal purely because the markets, what we have seen uh, have been negative about 25% in single month as well, right? So if you are able to control that kind of risk uh, and, and, and you know make the investor very comfortable uh, so that they don't see that kind of volatility, uh, then the propensity of them and the probability of them to be invested for a longer period of time is pretty much there. And that is where the importance of risk adjusted return strategies will come. Uh, we focus on sustainable, consistent performance and risk mitigation. And the other uh, piece is basically our offering is called ESG strategies, right? Which tries and specifically, uh, you know, kind of mitigates the stock risk aspect of investing, right? Uh, what do we mean by ESG is basically we try and take, uh, the strategies actually try and take all the stakeholders into account in terms of environment, social and uh, governance issues uh, and try to, uh, uh, try to deliver uh, returns which are much better uh, than the benchmark. So again, uh, there we are kind of uh, addressing the tail risk aspect of investing in equity or into stock or business. So uh, from our end, uh, these, these are the ones which we would do uh, from a risk adjusted return perspective. Now, why are we talking about risk adjusted return again and again is basically, you know, the dynamics and the world is changing, right? Uh, the world is changing with numerous amount of variables, huge amount of information overload, uh, and uh, you know, uh, you know, a kind of market uh, place which keeps on kind of changing uh, very often. So, if you see, I'm, I've listed some few variables here. Uh, something like, I mean, over the next decades, what is likely to come is basically newer variables, higher volatility, which may lead to higher volatility, 
and with dynamic and diverse economic conditions. We of course would have uh, data overload along with newer technologies and styles of fund management. We are looking at uh, environment over the next uh, you know, five to 10 years when machine is going to play a very, very important role. Artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, uh, you know, can can pretty much come up in into our investment scenario. In fact, they have started as well. So all in all, what I'm saying is basically over the next uh, decade, there are many many uh, uh, you know new variables which are likely to come, and because of which we we'll, we are going to see huge amount of volatility. And if an investor is uncomfortable with volatility, then risk adjusted return strategies are going to play an extremely important role. Uh, you know, for uh, for their investments, right? So over the next decade, again, the importance of risk adjusted return strategy is not going to go away. Uh, it is going to be a cornerstone of your investment portfolio. Lastly, our mantra uh, and our uh, what do we think or uh, what we live by uh, from an equity market perspective is basically that if we want to sustain in long term, manage your risks. Returns are just a byproduct, and we strongly believe in it. The reason is you have to elongate your time to remain in that particular asset class because asset classes are going to give you a huge amount of opportunities over a period of time. Returns are just a byproduct, and you will get it. Manage your risk is the most important. And that's that's about it. And I'll probably end, end my presentation here. Um, I may, may Thank have you very much, uh, Mr. Samzi, for your valuable yeah. insights. And, uh, go on, go on. Yes, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move on to the next session. Uh, uh, thank you very much once again, Mr. Sangvi. I have to say those were very, very valuable insights coming from you. Uh, with that, uh, after that heartfelt thank you to you, we're going to be moving to a panel discussion, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me tell you the theme of this uh, very interesting panel discussion. Uh, you know, the panelists are going to discuss what philosophy will create more wealth over the next decade, uh, growth at reasonable price or growth at any price or value investing. And this is going to be moderated by Mr. Sankal Popal. And we have a lineup of very, very eminent speakers who are going to be joining us. Mr. Mithul Patel. We have with us Mr. Tridip Bhattacharya and Mr. Madan Gopal Ramu. We also have Mr. Sachin Shah, ladies and gentlemen. So this is going to be a power pack panel. Uh, but give us two minutes as we bring in the speakers online. And then I will be with you in just two minutes. Thank you so much.